So I'm recording this on a Friday, and I want to take a break and get out of the office and go do something that I haven't done in a long time. Judy's going to stand guard while we're gone. So I'm going to roll in here for a second. If you were into photography books, this is the hidden gem of Fort Worth, period. You know, there is an unwritten rule when it comes to used bookstores. If there's something specific you're trying to find, they won't have it. If you're not looking for something specific, you'll come out with more than you can afford. I held it to two today, but uh, I did pretty well. What are you doing? Judy loves street photography. So today, I actually want to talk about the theme of this video, which is the whole reason I went to the bookstore. And I want to talk about the one thing in photography that I think is actually very much in danger of extinction. Well, there's a lot in photography that's in danger of extinction, but I think in all seriousness, the one is, is books. So back in the late 90s, early 2000s, we had this chain of bookstores in the United States called Borders. There's another one called Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble is still around, uh, although it's dwindled from what it used to be. But Borders was amazing. And Borders, I used to go up there every Friday night because they had the coffee shop. And then you'd go over to the art book section and whatever you were interested in, graphic design, fine art, painting, instructional or tutorial, and photography, there was just, I mean, that section was just like rows of books. And they were all divided out. And I remember going and spending hours in the photography section and spending an enormous amount of money on books as well. That's when I started collecting books. Over the years, that has started to decline very seriously. As most of you know, Borders eventually went bankrupt and they're completely gone now. And Barnes & Noble is still around. They're hanging on. But when you go in there, it's not rows and rows and rows of art books anymore and an entire section of photography. It's more like art books are like a, sh uh, like a column and one of those shelves will be photography. It's actually kind of sad to see. Dear Ted, whenever I feel down about my photography or lack of motivation, I watch one of your videos and then I go shoot. Thank you, Dennis Skyam. Dennis, that is awesome. Thank you for the postcard. This is a postcard from Montreal, which truth be known is one of my favorite cities in the world. I've been to Montreal twice. It is an awesome, awesome city and the food there is amazing. But this says, hello from Montreal, Canada. Just wanted to say thank you for your videos. Because of you, Michael Kenna has become my favorite photographer that I discovered via your minimalist composition techniques video. Can't wait to see more of your artist series. Would be great to have Kenna on the series. I agree, but I haven't been able to get a hold of him. Gaten, thank you very much. This is beautiful and I hope I can get back to Montreal soon. That really is one of my favorite places in the world. Hi, Ted. So enjoy your videos. Such great work. All the best. Bobby. This is from Bobby Reed in Los Angeles, California. Aw, oh, this is awesome. This is found paper at a yard sale. Coda bromide F2 expired 12, 1975. My students and I really enjoy the show. Thanks to the students at Elma High School, which is in Seattle, Washington. Thank you. I love it. But the thing about books, don't mind this. The thing about books is this, for me at least, when, especially when I was younger and very short on money and could barely afford to buy film, which I was shooting in crazy bulk amounts at that time when I could afford it, and, you know, it gave me an offer to collecting work by photographers that I looked up to because there was no way I could afford a print back then. In fact, now it's very difficult. And I was into printing my own work, but books gave me access to a collection of work by photographers that I liked, be it a monograph or some kind of compilation, that were such a wonderful sense of study and inspiration for me because they are an object. It's not looking at JPEGs on a computer screen and there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes you want to see something printed on paper and the art of bookmaking really is an art unto itself, even when it's done in mass production. Okay, this is awesome. This came from Finland and it was sent to me from Jorni P in Helsinki, Jorni. This is a letter accompanying a first issue of Valatus, Finnish for Exposure. It's a fanzine, a work of mine. I'm a 20-year-old Finnish dude living in Tampere. 
You already know what a zine is. I have been making fanzines focused heavily on hardcore punk for years, and I've been taking photographs, mostly of hardcore punk shows, for years as well. Okay, so let me take a minute and explain why I think this is so freaking cool, and it's also really neat that I happen to get this on the day that I plan to talk about books being on the brink of extinction. This is a zine. I have been very lucky to have a lot of people who have made zines send them to me, and I've shown them to you guys in these videos. And I usually get one of two questions. First of all, what is a zine? And second of all, where can I get one made? And a zine basically is a shortened up word for magazine. And zines have a tie with the punk rock and independent music movements in that, you know, when I was a kid and I played in rock bands and stuff, it, there was an attitude of you just wanted to get your music out no matter how it was you were able to do that. And so we would get a four track or sometimes we'd just set up a tape recorder and record a band practice and make an EP of improvised music and we'd distribute that to our friends. And it was just this attitude and this way of I'm going to make something and get it out and screw it, I don't need a record deal. And zines, I can remember seeing pretty much as far back as probably the 70s or the 80s at least, but in the 90s, they kind of became a big deal, particularly in the graphic design communities as well as photography. And it was basically, I don't have a publishing deal, but I want to write about music or I want to write about this band or whatever that is, and I'm just going to find a way to distribute this. I had some friends back in the 90s that used to make a zine called Nikki Goes to Hollywood, which was, anyway, weird name. But anyway, it was a graphic design zine, and they literally made their first copies on a Xerox machine and then saddle stitched them together or stapled them, and then they'd just go distribute that in like quantities of 30 or 40 copies. And then and later they got a letterpress and, and upgraded to that. But it was a punk rock attitude and I think this is so cool. And I'm talking about books and uh, you know, books are expensive to make. And for somebody to put money into publishing a book, no matter how famous the artist is, they have to put a bunch of money into actually printing the book, getting it produced, and then getting it sent out and distributed, and then see if it sells. And we're now in the age where Borders is gone, Barnes & Noble is having trouble, and it is what it is. And so that's where we are. So to see people still doing zines and keeping that alive, it's exciting to me. And so anyway, I really appreciate you sending this to me. This is awesome. So just because I know somebody will ask what books I picked up, I was looking for some new stuff just for my own research and enjoyment. And I picked up a Bill Brandt, Shadow and Light. This was a catalog that was done for a show at MoMA. And this is a catalog for a show that was done in Milwaukee, which is really interesting. And it's called Street Scene, The Psychological Gesture in American Photography, 1940 to 1959. Sorry, it's not on screen. And it features photographs by Ted Croner, Louis Farrer, Robert Frank, William Klein, Saul Leiter, and Lizette Model with additional photographs by Alexi Brodovich, Margaret Bork-White, Robert Cap, etc., etc. So I'm really excited about this because I had not seen this before. This is the deal with books. Now, I have featured books on this show really since the very first videos that I had done. And so a lot of those videos stay up for years on end. And people will discover them later and then they come back to me and they say, well, when I look on Amazon, it's really expensive or I can't find it or it's sold out. And that's the deal. Books become rare these days and it is very difficult to find them. So I always tell people, if you see something and you know you really want it, go ahead and get it because the chances of finding it again get really slim. That book on Italian street photography that I've talked about ad nauseum on here, I remember when I found that, I found there were two copies and I bought them both, gave one of them to my friend John Free and I kept the other, but I knew that would be really hard to find again. And so anyway, that's my moral to that story. The other thing I wanna say about this is when you see zines or if you make zines, support that local scene. I think there's something so awesome about making things that are actual objects that you can hold in your hand. In fact, I think in some ways, having a zine is almost a little bit more cool and unique than having a big bound professionally produced book. 